Hello, I'm Eric Snodgrass, and thank you for watching today's Ag Forecast for South America, brought to you by Nutrient Ag Solutions. I want to do something I did on uh, Monday night's video right away here at the beginning. Let's go look at the latest uh, NDVI data. Now again, when we look at these images, we can't use them pretty far to the north here. There's too much cloud cover that causes contamination. So we got to come a little bit farther south into southern Brazil. So this is, again, where Mato Grosso do Sul and uh, Parna come together, right on the Parna River. And this area in through here is just... Um, it's just heavy into agriculture. Nearly every acre is. And these NDVI values are well below average. In fact, well below half. And that shows me that that crop in that area is stressed. We come even farther south into Rio Grande do Sul and much of their agriculturally productive land and even into Uruguay. And on this side of the Parana River in Argentina, this is a very large region showing up with um, you know very low values of NDVI right now, which tells me that from space, the crop does not look healthy. But you've probably heard lately about some of the crop conditions reports that have come out of Argentina. And remember, when we think about uh, Argentina's main growing area, especially for corn and soybeans, we're thinking along the river here. We're thinking right in through this region over toward Cordoba, so from like Santa Fe to Cordoba, and then back toward Buenos Aires. Now around Cordoba, just remember, there is right in through here, okay, a mountain chain. So all the productive farmland is on this side of it. And just again, just to illustrate something, there's a large region of very productive ground that has, from space, very low NDVI values. And uh, it's just interesting to see the crop condition from space. And I think we're going to continue to see some substantial degradation of this crop, at least through the next 7 to 10 days. I'm going to talk about that first. So first thing I'd like to do here is I want to play for you. Let's bring this back to the beginning here. It's almost there. And this is going to be an animation looking back over the last seven days of precipitation. So it's about ready to restart. Uh, there it goes. Now you notice how powerful the monsoon is at this point. It's very wet in Mato Grosso over toward Goyas, Tocantins, and really hammering Minas Gerais and Bahia. But extremely dry to the south. Fronts try to get through, but they just can't make it. Look, they just try to come through and bring moisture, and they're just not there. Watch that one right there. It just fizzle out as it heads toward the north. And what's going on here with this setup is that while some scattered showers have tried to make it in here, they've been ineffectual at really relieving this area of its longer term drought situation. And here's the issue. Over the next seven days, there will be parts of Argentina. So that's that same area that uh, we, you know, we just highlighted here going over dry, getting into Paraguay, Uruguay, Rio Grande do Sol, even into Parna that are just not going to be measuring much precipitation. While this section from Mato Grosso through Goyas toward Minas Gerais and even parts of the Tocantins, we could be measuring another 150 to 250 millimeters of rainfall. That's extremely heavy rains. You stitch it together over the next 10 days and you get this. This area expanded since our discussion on Monday. Broad area through much of the next 7 to 10 days is going to be dry. But as I alluded to on Monday, we thought that this was going to be the case through the beginning of January, but we kind of discussed, even we discussed this at the end of December, that there's the potential for some sense of a pattern change moving forward with all of this. And the likelihood of this region staying as dry as it is starts to fade. Now, what's been going on as of late? We've had what we call a very strong Antarctic oscillation. Sometimes it's called the Southern Annular Mode. And that just means that the jet stream is screaming and it's staying way south. I, mean, I almost drew off the page here. So what ends up happening is we don't end up getting these big lows that sometimes they curl up right off the coast here, leave a front that goes across this area that merges with the monsoonal flow here and increases the rainfall. The front drags through Argentina, gives them storms like we get in the Midwestern part of the United States. And then it meets up with the monsoonal flow, which is like this, and adds rain to this area. We've not had this. There has been, instead, high pressure in this area. And one of the reasons for the high pressure here so often is that we've had a lot of upper-level rising motion here. And that air, which is going up, exhausts in the upper levels of the atmosphere and expands out like this. That's what it's got to do. It can't keep going up. It hits the stratosphere and has to spread out. So you end up getting subsidence over southern Brazil and Argentina. And that's been the mainstay of things in this region of Brazil for a while. But we're going to ask ourselves if that's going to continue. Because in the near term, while that does continue, we're wet and cool north, which is going to hamper early harvest efforts. Okay, But we could see temperatures down here in Paraguay, Uruguay, Argentina, 
be at times uh, hitting the mid upper 90s, lower triple digits. And as I just kind of slide this window forward, look at the heat that's coming in there. So we get out here toward you know January 10th, 11th, 12th. I mean, there's just quite a bit of very warm air that's going to be stretched in this area. So we're going to watch out for that very carefully as we progress forward. But look at this. The Antarctic Oscillation it has been positive for a while, really peaked here in early December, tried to drop down mid-December, didn't make it, came back up at the end of December. We got about here to start the new year, but it's bouncing right back up now. So here's the question on all of our minds. Is it really going to dip down here and possibly come back to neutral or negative, or is it just going to do another bounce? What's, what do I mean by this? Okay, if the AAO is positive, Argentina, Southern Brazil tends to see higher pressure. If the AAO goes negative, it correlates to better moisture return to those areas. See the spread on this? It's enormous out there past mid-January. That's the first part of it. Second part of it is the MJO slash La Nina connection, and this is really important to listen to, okay? This is today and going all the way through the next 15 days, and you're looking here across longitude. Now, over the next 15 days, the European Ensemble, see these warmer colors stretching through here? That is the progression of upper level subsidence moving from east, excuse me, west to east, which is the normal progression, towards South America. What ends up happening here is this. We go from a pattern right now that favors a lot of rising motion there and subsequently subsidence here. We go from that pattern over to something like this, where now we start to see subsidence in this area, subsidence in this area, and in between better rising motion. Let me show what I'm talking about. This is the next seven days. We've already looked at this. But as I slide this seven day forecast window forward, what you're gonna notice is we start to show drier conditions over much of Brazil's eastern and northern growing area and possibly wetter conditions coming in here. Now, does this really do that? If the MJO progresses as it suggests it will in the models, the answer is yes. If it fails, if it stays strongly in phase seven, this is a kind of a bogus forecast. It doesn't happen. Now, you know me, if you watch my content, I tend to favor model solutions. I think that they're consistent. And we've now seen five model runs that have suggested this area goes over drier for about a week to 10 days. Now, folks in this area, if it goes over drier, are gonna really harvest the soybean crop fast. If the moisture returns to the south, this could help well, stop the degradation of the crop. Uh, it'll put a Band-Aid on it. And we're not talking about much precip here. It's not as though we're just going to be completely corrective on the longer-term drought. A little bit of moisture just slows down what was already happening here. But this is probably the most important part of this forecast. The European Ensemble, going out this far, continues to show this. Now, we don't have data right now from the GFS or the GFS Ensemble. Uh, the Nomad server from the National Weather Service is having problems, and so we're just going to use the European as our primary source. But let's just take this out and go a bit farther with it. This is the new European 45-day forecast. Now, we're only looking here at a 30-day chunk of that, so basically now through early February. But I'll be honest with you. The patterns I'm seeing here from the European weeklies seem to be, well, watch. As we go forward, let's look at the time period of, I don't know, we'll stop it there. This would be January 18th to February 18. Very interesting to see such a large area of drier weather in Brazil's northern and even some of the north central growing areas, but very wet in east, and then bringing in lots of moisture down here to regions that had been very, very dry. Um, I'm going to be honest, I cannot put together the connections in the atmosphere to make this pattern happen this way. Uh, in other words, I don't have any confidence in the long range European at this point. I think so much of what's going on right now is going to depend on what's going on with the MJO and La Nina. Those seem to be the two dominant teleconnections. So we've already seen the La Nina fading here, but still very strong in this area. Those cold waters are correlated with dry conditions south. So that is the first part of this. 
But if that Antarctic Oscillation keeps producing really strong zonal winds here, that also leads to drier conditions there. If either of these two things go into some sort of a flux, or if the MJO comes out of phase 7 and pops out over here, or even resets back in the Indian Ocean, all of this, all of this is going to change dramatically. What I do find interesting is that the new long-range data was just released as well. In February, March, and April, it's interesting to see that the models painting this section of Brazil wet and Mato Grosso near normal to drier than normal, that's for the Safrina crop. Southern Brazil dry, Paraguay, Uruguay dry, and Argentina dry. What I think is happening is right now the models are biased way too much toward their initial conditions. But let's just ask ourselves this, what if this verifies? For the soybean and corn crop over here, this is less than 10% of the total crop in this wet area. And this would possibly mean that we'd have to watch out for some regional drought development for the Safrina crop. Uh, but again, these long range forecasts right now, I think are too closely tied to the tropical teleconnections, mainly the MJO and La Nina, and those two things are in quite a state of flux. So if I can, I want to come back to one important point, all right? We see that over the next week, just look at this, very dry conditions here. But as I showed you, the ensemble forecast is suggesting that getting into week two, we've now seen uh, five runs of this, we dry out north, get drier north, and we start to return better moisture in the middle here. So let's watch it carefully. I'll keep an eye on the trends all weekend. I'll tell you about it more on Monday. Appreciate your attention. Thanks.